Avatar is an absolutely iconic movie, and even a sequel out recently with more in the works. But recently, fans have noticed that there are still some plot holes in the original. For instance, why do the Navi accept humans? And the problems with the concept of unobtainium. In today's video, let's go over all these things that don't make sense in Avatar, so keep watching. First off, these 10 things make zero sense. It's pretty hard to imagine that James Cameron's massively successful Avatar is 12 years old at this point, but time sure does seem to fly in the 21st century in a way that it never did before. Cameron has his sights set on a string of Avatar sequels beginning with the next installment in December 2022, which means that the audiences will finally be able to return to the planet of Pandora. For a COVID-weary audience and a Hollywood movie business now facing total collapse, this would surely be a welcome respite, and the beginning of happy days all over again. That's enough reason to feel optimistic about the Avatar franchise, but Cameron's original record-breaking movie certainly had a lot of plot holes that deserve to be scrutinized. So without further ado, here's a list of 10 things that make absolutely no sense in the Avatar franchise. To start with number 10, no oxygen and gravity. As opposed to the worst planets in sci-fi pop culture that nobody would ever want to visit, the planet of Pandora is a virtual paradise with massive sprawling forests as far as the human eye can see. How ironic it is then, that there is an overload of carbon dioxide in the environment that makes it unbreathable for human beings. This is a plot hole difficult enough to cover up, at least from the perspective of our own planet, and not to mention the role trees play in storing huge amounts of carbon. James Cameron should have jettisoned the carbon dioxide explanation and stuck with the fact that Pandora is composed of high amounts of hydrogen sulfide, which would have been enough to kill humans all by itself. It would be one less thing to try and explain this phenomenon later down the road. According to Avatar, the Na'vi are much taller and stronger than human beings. The lighter gravity of Pandora was supposed to explain why they're so tall and strong, but that is flawed science. The weaker gravity would make them taller, so one half is right, but low gravity would give them less reason to develop strong muscles, so it would make them weaker, not stronger, than humans. By the way, nowhere do we see any evidence of gravity being that much lighter than Earth. Objects fall at the same rate, people walk the same and Jake never once mentions the need to adjust to the gravity. Following up at number 9, the Avatar Process. Humans linked up to their avatars using link units, a special type of bed that's forged of psionic link across great distances. But it was never fully explained how this process worked, other than to suggest that each avatar has receiver nodes grown into their brains from the time of their birth. This suggests a type of Wi-Fi connection, 7G maybe? That could cast the connection across many kilometers. The range of the connection seems awfully short, and there's absolutely no mention of what would happen during a signal interruption, though it is assumed that the Avatar simply lost consciousness as normal. The entire premise makes no sense at all. Next up at number 8, Unobtainium. There were two main problems with the concept of the material known as Unobtainium in Avatar. The first is obviously the name, which has been used in as a joke within the scientific community to describe any material needed for a specific specific purpose that was practically pretty impossible to find. Why the name was not changed to a proper scientific one when it was discovered on Pandora isn't known yet. The second problem was with the material itself, which flew in the face of the laws of physics due to its matrix. It was all a bit technical, but the structure of unobtainium goes against everything we know about superconducting minerals. Coming up at number 7, the Na'vi accept humans. The Na'vi are a sentient species that are way more powerful than human beings and have an alien physiology that includes bones made up of carbon fiber. Their most unique feature is that they can connect with all other creatures on Pandora through a physical link in their heads. This one made no sense. No matter how many ways one tries to slice it, the Na'vi are a warrior tribe with deep spiritual connection with the planet Pandora. This makes their ambivalence towards humans all the more puzzling. Yes, they weren't too fond that humans are tearing up the planet with deforestation and mining operations but they seem to be making exceptions. These exceptions are humans that grow Na'vi clones that can be remotely controlled to allow for infiltration into society. This would be interpreted by quite literally any culture as a Trojan horse scenario and has an insult to boot. It was explained earlier in the movie that the Na'vi were so tough to kill because they had naturally occurring carbon fiber reinforced in their bones. In reality, carbon by itself is actually palatable and soft. It only becomes hard and strong when it's mixed with other elements 
to form an alloy. Alloys are not present in nature and most certainly wouldn't occur in a living being. But in the film, the Navi actually aren't that hard to kill. As we see the corporation managing to kill a whole bunch of them by blowing up their tree and shooting them down with guns. Not to mention at number six, no tracking mechanisms. The first half of the movie establishes that the scientists in charge of the Avatar program haven't really thought a lot of things through. This was evident when Jake Sully lost contact with the rest of his team and ended up being led back to the Navi village by Neytiri, played by Zoe Saldana, in one of her best roles yet. With such advanced technology at their disposal, as well as the means to remote control a living organism, would it not be prudent to install a tracking device of some sort underneath their skin in case the avatar was, let's say, misplaced? Something to think about for sure. We're in the top five now. First up at number five is Trudy's paint job. Michelle Rodriguez, who is best known for starring in the frightening popcorn horror franchise Resident Evil, played the role of Trudy in Avatar, a character who takes a heroic turn for the better. After watching how the military treated the Na'vi for so long, Trudy decided to call it quits and abandon her unit, rather than take part in a mass slaughter. It was an excellent turn of events for the character that instantly made her one of the most likable in the plot. That's all fine, but it was not made clear when or where she was able to paint her attack chopper in Na'vi colors, not to mention herself. Theoretically, the paint job would have helped Na'vi identify her as a friend, but then it's more a question of timing as opposed to anything else. Coming in at number four, the mech knife. One of the coolest scenes of the entire movie was undoubtedly the fight between Neytiri and Quaritch. After all, the viewers loved watching a guy in a giant combat robot do battle with an alien canine being ridden by an exotic alien. There was a lot of action in the scene, even before Jake joined in on the fun. But to be honest, that large combat knife simply made no sense at all. Quartich drew it from a holster and wielded it just as a human would, when any mechanical desire worth his or her salt would have included bladed weaponry of some sort in the machine's forearms. It was just one more object that could get lost in a fight. Following up at number three, Sully tames a great Lino Terex. It was one thing to go all out in an effort to redeem oneself after falling to a low point, but it was quite another to suggest that sheer force of will could overcome anything. Sully somehow managed to tame a great Leonoteryx, maybe the most fearsome and frightening apex predator on Pandora, and certainly up there with the most deadly sci-fi movie monsters in the entire universe. This made little sense given Sully's relative inexperience compared to the Navi, who had been hunting and gathering for decades. Just the sheer sight of a Leonoteryx was enough to send Navi running for the hills, which made it highly improbable that Sully would manage to tame one. Of course, then there would be no triumphant third act after all. Next up at number two, let's look at Grace's death. This particular scene made no sense, not because of a technicality, but because of the sheer buildup of events. After Grace is fatally wounded, Sully made a plea for her consciousness to be permanently bound to her avatar in order to save her life. It was a long and drawn out scene with an extreme amount of detail regarding the ritual. Not to mention, it was also a colossal also let down. Grace died anyway, and the scene served no real purpose except to set up a convenient thread whereby Jake could abandon his human body and prepare for more Avatar sequels. This being said, it did present the opportunity for the iconic actress, Sigourney Weaver, to make a new appearance in the upcoming Avatar 2. And last but not least at number one, we have military heavy-handedness. It was established early on in the film that the reason for the Avatar project was to satisfy the United Nations and the public regarding the mistreatment and exploitation of the Navi by human forces. Yet the military was allowed to steamroll over the Navi without so much as an apology, which seemed entirely suspect. Word of this would have surely made its way back to Earth and triggered massive protest and scrutiny. Despite this, the military forces under the command of Quartich go full speed ahead to get what they want, regardless of the consequent political ramifications. Just who was in charge of Pandora? anyway. And that's a wrap for this video. What do you think about our list of things that make no sense about Avatar? Let us know in the comments down below. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.